Hey guys, James again with TFB TV and welcome to How to Shoot Your Gun Part 2. This is the video edition. You guys may remember maybe a year or two ago I did a How to Shoot Your Gun photography edition and it was how to take pictures of your gun. This is how to do video. Now to discuss the scope of this video, this is really just the technical aspect. This isn't how to make a creative or interesting video. This is just how to capture it, guys, and make it broadcast ready. I'll leave the creativity up to you. So what are we gonna talk about? First, we're gonna talk about light. Then we're gonna talk about hardware, and that is your bit rate, your frame rate, your resolution. And then finally, we're gonna talk about settings, like your shutter speed, your aperture, your ISO. Those are all critical if you wanna take good video. So let's jump right in, light. Today's a good example, it's overcast. This is almost perfect outdoor light. And guys, light is critical. Without light, you can't take decent video. And without great light, you can't take great video. There's no post-processing, no hardware, no lens that can salvage a video that has really harsh light or not enough light. There's ways you can help it, but Ultimately, if you want to take really good video, you also need really good light. Now, there are tons of videos and tutorials out there on light. There are even books on light. I actually recommend the Hot Shoe Diaries, which is a really excellent book focusing almost solely on light. So I'm not really gonna venture more into light. Actually, I take that back. I'm gonna reference light a little bit more when we talk about exposure. So exposure is basically the balance of light in your picture or your video. So you guys have seen it before, you take a photograph indoors, right? And there's a window in the background. So you take a photograph indoors of somebody and they're perfectly exposed, right? You can see them in the picture, all the detail in their face, their clothes, etc. But it's a lot darker in the house than it is outside of the house. So when you look out the window, it's what we call blown out. And that is, it's completely white from the light because you've got your exposure set so high on your camera that it's exposed for a dark room. So anything with more light than a dark room is probably going to be blown out by what we call highlights. So it's highlights on the high end, shadows on the dark end. Guys, this is the most boring part, but it's also really important. I'm going to show a little B-roll right here of your exposure meter on most cameras. It's got kind of a zero in the middle, and if you got maybe a little bit too much light, it'll be over to the right side, and if you've got a little bit too much in shadows, it'll be a little to the left side, but you gotta nail that exposure because what happens is usually, especially in the context of gun videos, people will have their exposure settings turned up way too high, and that'll lead to your face being completely white and blown out, and it's unsalvageable. You can't save that in post. You're just gonna have like a white frickin' face, like powder, like that movie from the 90s. Now, when you're taking still photographs, it's easy to kind of adjust your settings. You'll even have like an exposure wheel that you can flip left or right, and the camera will automatically adjust your shutter speed, your aperture, your ISO. It'll adjust that automatically so you get a good or a well-exposed photograph. If you're going to take good video, you need to handle all of that yourself. So you are going to be setting the exposure through your ISO settings, through your shutter speed, through your frame rate, through your aperture. You're going to do that yourself and I'm walking you through it in this video. This all sounds like garbage right now, but I swear guys, we're gonna get there. So let's talk about hardware. In my opinion, one thing that doesn't get talked about enough when you're talking about video is bit rate. Well, what is the bit rate of a camera? Okay, let's say that you know there's this really cute girl or guy or whatever you're into, and uh, you say, send me something a little naughty. You know, that's what the kids are doing these days, right? So you get a picture and it comes across on your cell phone and before you open it, you see that it's like 50 kilobytes in size. And it's like, you know, what the hell is this? Is this gonna be like a little tiny photo? Is it gonna be blurry, like no detail? Now, on the other hand, when you get a photograph and it's like four, five, six megabytes, now you know it's gonna be higher resolution, it's gonna have more detail, it's probably gonna be a sharper image. See, you guys already know, you people on Tinder, 
you already know what bitrate is. And that's basically how much data your camera can put into a frame. So bitrate of a camera is measured in megabits per second, not megabytes, megabits, I don't know why, but it's megabits per second. Now I consider the bare minimum bitrate to be 28 megabits per second. And that's only if you're shooting 1080 at 24, maybe 30 frames per second. And I'll go into why those other numbers are important in a moment. But bitrate is how much data your camera can take in and then put into the video. Now let's talk about frame rate and that will make bit rate make more sense. Frame rate, it's very easy. It's how many frames per second your camera does or can shoot. Now, right now the new hotness is 60 frames per second for YouTube. That's the stuff that looks like a, uh, I call it like a Spanish soap opera where it's really flowy. You guys don't know what you're seeing. You're like, wow, this is really sharp or this is a really cool image, but what you're seeing is 60 frames per second where it's really smooth because the average, the cinematic bit rate and what I'm shooting in right now is 24 frames per second. So that is the camera is taking a picture. We're making a flip book, right, of images. And this camera right now is taking 24 pictures every second and turning that into an animation. For what it's worth, Lord of the Rings, that was shot at 48 frames per second. 60 is really hot right now, but you've got cameras, uh, GoPros, consumer level cameras that are shooting in excess of 100 frames per second. Now that's kind of neat because anything lower than 24 frames per second, it looks weird. It's going to look choppy. So 24 is kind of like your bare minimum. So that said, if you shoot in 48 frames a second, you can slow a video down to half speed. So now you've slowed it down to 24 frames per second and it still looks normal, but it's at half speed. But this is what a 24 frames per second video looks like if I slow it down to a quarter speed. So you're looking at six frames per second and it looks like choppy garbage. So that's why 24 frames per second, if you shoot in 24 frames per second, you have no slow motion. Do not slow that video down. If you shoot in 48, you can slow it down by up to half. If you shoot at 96, you can slow it down up to a quarter, so on and so forth. So that's why frame rate's so important because in post, you can give it the look you like, you can slow it down as much or as little as you want. So ideally, right, you're gonna wanna shoot at 100 frames per second all the time, right? Actually, not so fast. You don't wanna do that because we're going back to bit rate. So if you have a camera, that let's say it has a bit rate of 25 megabits per second. So if you're shooting 24 frames per second, then you're getting about one megabit for every frame of that video. And that's not bad, it's not terrible, it's not great either. Especially if you're in 1080, that's okay. If you're in 4K, then you're stretching it a little thin. But, and you may see where I'm going, let's say you're shooting at 100 frames per second all the time, but your camera can only take down 25 megabits of data per second. Well, now you're getting a quarter megabit of data for every frame. So each of your frames for your 100 frames per second video are going to have a quarter of the data as your 24 frames per second video. So does that make sense, guys? Your bit rate, that's how much data your camera can record per second. Your frames per second, that's how many frames your camera can record per second. And if you try to shoot too many frames, you don't get an increase in bitrate. You only have a limited amount of bitrate to work with and it's gotta be spread evenly over those frames. All right, let's talk briefly about resolution. Right now, you guys have cameras that are either 1080 or 4K. 1080 is perfectly fine. I upload most of my videos to YouTube 1080. If you can't afford a 4K camera, it's not the end of the world. Now, there are some advantages to downscaling 4K and getting sharper video, but we won't really talk about that. The main thing that I like with 4K is it's very easy to take B-roll. So if I'm sitting here holding a pistol and I'm shooting in 4K right now, I'm gonna jump, I'm gonna do a jump cut to my hands. Now that's two times digital magnification. So now my 4K image is a 1080 image, but that's the thing, I can magnify it twice and it's still 1080 resolution. If you try to magnify 1080 twice, then the resolution's not as good. The ultimate point I'm driving at here you can shoot 1080, and if you need to magnify a little bit, you can get away with it. You can shoot 4K, 
and you can magnify your image a lot more and still maintain really good image quality and resolution. So we just talked about your hardware, your bit rate, your frame rate, your resolution. Now let's talk about your settings, which are really important. That's what's gonna help set your exposure, right? Like how much light there is in the image. Now let's talk next about aperture. Aperture is how wide you can open your lens and how much light it can let in. It's kind of weird because the lower your number is, the more light it lets in, the wider the opening of the aperture is. So like f2.8 allows in a lot more light than say f7.1 or f9. Now without getting into too much in the way of specifics, you also have the wider you open your lens, you get a shallower depth of field. So right now I'm shooting at f2.8. That's pretty wide open. But if I took a few steps back or a few steps forward, I would be out of focus. Where if I was shooting at f22, I wouldn't be letting in as much light, but I could move around and I would still be in focus. So that's something you need to think about. If you're shooting action shots, if you're shooting video, you might want to close your aperture a little bit, kind of move around the frame without getting out of focus. Really the problem for people that are going to be shooting videos with guns is going to be letting too much light in. Even if you have your lens at its absolute tightest aperture, which would probably be F22 in most cases. Now one way around having too much light is to get a neutral density filter or a variable neutral density filter. Those are basically pieces of black glass that you put over your lens that restrict how much light comes in. Now, another way to trick your camera into reducing how much light comes in is to adjust your shutter speed. If you want to skip the discussion about shutter speed, you can as long as you remember this. Always make your shutter speed twice the number of your frame rate. So if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, make your shutter speed 50, which is 1 50th of a second. If you're shooting at 60 frames per second, then make it 120 or 125, which is 1 125th or 1 120th of a second. So how does that relate to exposure? Well, the higher your shutter speed, the less light you're gonna let in. So there's a little trick there. And that is if you're shooting outside and you don't have a neutral density filter, you have your lens, your aperture closed all the way and you're still you have too much light, then what you can do is maybe shoot at 60 frames per second instead of 24. And then that means you've got to move your shutter speed from 50 to 120 or 125. So you're going to reduce the amount of light that goes into the camera, but your footage is still going to look really good. Now, let's say you don't have the option. You're shooting at f22. You've got your aperture closed as far as it can go. You're outside. There's still too much light and the only thing you can shoot at is 24 frames per second, well then my friend, all you can do is just crank up that shutter speed and pray. The video is not gonna look as good, it's gonna look choppy, but you know, sometimes, especially for action sequences, it looks, it still looks really good, even when it's kind of choppy. It looks like if you watch the beginning of maybe Saving Private Ryan, it's kind of choppy, gritty footage, and it still looks all right, so you're not totally screwed. Now, the last one we're gonna talk about is ISO. ISO is not really that important if you're gonna be shooting outside, because your ISO is going to be 200 or 150, or as low as your camera can go. Now, ISO is your sensor's sensitivity. The more sensitive it is to light, yeah, you'll get more exposure. It'll expose your image more because you're making the sensor more sensitive, but it increases noise. So I'll show a picture uh, right now of high sensitivity, high ISO, which is a ton of noise. If you guys need more light, nicer cameras can do around 800 ISO or 1000 ISO, and it still looks pretty good, almost unnoticeable. Once you get up to like 3200, it's gonna look pretty noisy, but you can save the shot. Like if you really need to, go ahead and do it. But you know, open your aperture up all the way, slowest shutter speed you could possibly shoot at, and crank up that ISO. That's if you're indoors, if you're shooting shot show, that's what you need to do. All right, so what are good settings? For shooting outside, I like shooting between F7 and F9 for your aperture because that gives you some room to play without things going out of focus, and that's generally going to be very sharp for most lenses. Now, that said, if you're shooting at 24 frames per second and 1 50th shutter speed, it's gotta be a really overcast day 
for you to shoot in like F7 without your camera being totally blown out. You're gonna have to crank it up to F22 or whatever. So that said, if you're letting in too much light, again, look at maybe shooting at 60 frames per second and at a 1 1 25th shutter speed. And that way you'll let in less light, things will be less blown out. Or just buy a neutral density filter. That's what I do. I've got a variable neutral density filter on my camera. And so I can set it however I want and then limit how much light gets in by adjusting the neutral density filter. Now for shooting indoors, you're gonna wanna shoot as wide open as possible. Really, you want a camera that can shoot F2.8 or F2 or F1.4 or F1.7 if you're going to be shooting indoors because you want to let in as much light as possible at the lowest ISO possible. Anyways, guys, I hope that isn't too confusing. But guys, it's all about light. How much light you have to work with and how much light you're allowing into the camera. Again, video is trickier than photo because for photo, your camera can kind of figure things out for itself and your image is still going to look good. With video, you need to understand how all of this works, how it affects your exposure, and you need to apply the settings. So go back, watch this video again, play around with your camera, ask questions in the comments. I'll do my best to answer, and I know there are gonna be other video nerds on here that are gonna be willing to help out. So I hope that was helpful. Guys, thanks a ton for watching. TFB TV guys, I hope you're watching this and you enjoyed it. Thank you to our sponsors, Proxybit and Ventura Munitions. Tons of good video cameras on Proxybit. Guys, see you next week.